So thank you all for being here once again. It means a lot to me and hopefully I get a good grade this time as well. So the topic I have for you today is abortion. Some of you know that already. And I want to talk about why it is a grave sin and ugly stain upon our country, the United States. And Christians need to provide a moral and biblical perspective on why it is wrong to murder an unborn child or an innocent child in the womb of its mother, and we need to work to abolish it. So my general goal is I want to persuade my audience or you guys to act. My specific goal is I want to educate my audience on why abortion is the slaughter of innocent children in the womb and of the consequences of having an abortion, not just on the child and the mother, but the nation as well. I then want to persuade my audience to get involved with banning abortion and to get people to uh, support their, uh, the abolition of it, I guess I would say. I also want to inform you guys of something. Now, since 1973, when Roe v. Wade was passed by the Supreme Court, they made a decision to legalize abortion throughout the entire country. 61 million babies, approximately, have been murdered since 1973 because of Roe v. Wade. Now, as children of God, it is incumbent on Christians to defend the sanctity of life. As Jeremiah states, and do no wrong, do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, nor the widow, neither shed innocent blood in this place, Jeremiah 22, 3. And by the way, I want you guys to remember the 61 million I mentioned that were slaughtered, because I'm going to mention that again. So, Christians must convince people, that's us, Christians, that the act of abortion is the murder of innocent human beings in the womb of the mother, and we must do everything we can to end this immoral practice uh, in America. So, abortion is a horrible act that really is murder from God's perspective. It is the murder of millions of innocent babies and is facilitating the destruction of America every day. It is time for all Christians to engage in the fight to work to end this practice in America. Ending abortion will be a start to ending the nation's national sins and will in turn save millions of babies' lives. So let's take a closer look. So my first main point is abortion is murdering babies. Plain and simple, but let's get more in depth. The idea or concept of abortion has been around for thousands of years, so this is not something new the United States has created. It's been around for quite a while, and many countries today have legalized it, including the United States. The people who support abortion claim that babies in the womb are not yet human, and they're just merely a fetus or blob, some people would call it. Abortion supporters work hard to prove that a baby is not considered a human being until after it is outside the womb of its mother. Now, in their minds, this justifies killing an unborn child. But, however, modern technology, such as ultrasounds, prove otherwise. And I'm going to show you today. Leah, you're my assistant today. If you give me a hand. Yeah. I promise it won't be long. So here. Well, you like this? Come a little closer here. So you might be wondering what this is. Well, this is a baby in the womb of its mother. But it's not just any baby in the womb. This is a baby at just two months old. And you can't really tell, but just at two months of age, in the womb of its mother, this baby has its own fingerprints, it can urinate, it can make a fist, and it can feel pain. More importantly, God already sees this child growing in the womb right now. So, you can sit that down, Leah, thank you. So, God considers every baby to be a human being, and even recognizes this fact before conception. Jeremiah again states, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah 1 5. Now, it's very clear that God considers killing of an unborn child to be murder, and the punishment for such action is the death penalty. Nothing more, nothing less. So, this brings me to my second main point abortion contributes to the destruction of society. Abortion not only has a negative effect on the child and mothers, but to a nation as well. When nations and churches embrace sins like abortion, they immediately begin to die. No joke. So I want to read a report to you guys from Planned Parenthood. This is their 2018 to 2019 annual report. And this provides a little bit of insight into its impact on society, particularly to the unborn and mothers. So according to this giant of the abortion industry, listen closely. They committed 345,672 abortion in one year time. That's just one year. And Roe v. Wade has been around since 1973. That means 20,806 babies were killed each month. 947, 947 excuse me, denied life every day. 
and 39 hearts were stilled by abortion every hour, 24-7. You remember the 61 million I mentioned? Well, I want to inform you guys of something. When those mothers get an abortion, they are not required by any law to report on it. A woman can just walk into a Planned Parenthood, get an abortion, and walk out without the outside world ever knowing that they had an abortion. So as far as I'm concerned, the 61 million that have been murdered, it's quite possibly double because I know for a fact, and we all should know, not every mother reports that when they get an abortion. So that number could possibly be double, which is insane. So it's not just the innocent babies who are affected by this evil practice, the society as a whole suffers as well. Abortion hurts society psychologically, morally, financially, and in the long term. Right to Life Michiana states that low population growth in high income countries like the United States is likely to create social and economic problems according to abortion hurts society. Abortion also affects the gender makeup of the global population, distorting the natural balance between sexes and will likely have far reaching consequences in the future, again, according to abortion hurts society. Abortion also normalizes the killing of humans just for pure convenience. This brings me to my final point. As America continues to murder millions of babies, there has never been a time for Christians to speak up and push back the wicked people who support this barbaric practice. For far too long, Christians have just sit back, kick their feet up, and let this turn into a huge disaster for our country. And let me say it's been far too long. The Bible states that righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. That's Proverbs 14:34. God sees what is going on in America today, and mark my words, he is not happy. There are many things we can do to fix the abortion problem. First of all, we need to repent, repent of our complacency and indifference to the fate of innocent unborn children who are daily being murdered in our land. Determine that we can and will do something to save these babies and eliminate this evil practice. So, I challenge all of you in here today to get involved in a way that you can help eliminate abortion from America. I have a few suggestions that you might consider today. First one is volunteering at a local crisis pregnancy center, or CPC, and help support the center financially. Getting involved in lobbying your city, state, and national officials, and legislators on behalf of life. Third, and this is important, I want you guys to listen. There are some of you in here that aren't quite old enough to vote yet. But listen to this third option here. Vote and encourage other Christians to vote. Distribute and use pro-life uh, voting guides. When you guys get old enough to vote, like me, please do us a favor and do yourself a favor. Go vote in every election and make sure you vote for someone who supports pro-life policies and vote for pro-life policies no matter what, all the time. Because our way of life depends on it and so do the lives of the unborn that are coming. Fourth, join a pro-life organization and help to support it. So, this brings me to my conclusion. Now, it should be apparent to all of us by now that abortion is morally sinful and an abomination to God. God considers abortion to be murder. Millions of babies have been killed and will continue to be killed if us Christians do not stand up for the innocent, confront the pro-abortion lobby, and work to abolish abortion entirely. We can do so if we wake up and realize that if we don't do something about this, then God will judge this nation severely. And let me just say it. I can't believe he hasn't judged this nation severely right now, but I fear it's coming soon if we don't do something about it. So I'd like to end by saying this, putting infants down like dogs, how many of you think that sounds cruel or disgusting? It's how one pro-abortion advocate suggests we address infants putting, uh, address infants born with disabilities, excuse me. Our society is on the path to placing human life on the level of dogs. Now, you guys have dogs? You love your dogs, right? I love my dogs too, but in my opinion, under no circumstance is my dog's life above the life of an unborn child or a child born with disabilities. It's just not happening. Are you interested in wanting to show that you value human life as God does? Then getting involved physically and verbally about wanting to ban abortion is a great way to do so. Always remember that God values life, no matter what, and it is precious to Him. That is why abortion is morally wrong in His eyes. And it's up to us Christians to end it, because let me just say, I think I can speak for all of us, that we are the type of people that value life more than any other person on this earth. As Christians, that's why we need to be the ones leading this charge. If we don't, 
and no one's going to, and abortion is going to be here for quite a while. So, I hope you guys learned something. I hope this encouraged you to think hard on abortion, and hopefully we can end this uh, disaster in our country and start reversing course. But once again, I want to thank you guys for being here, and it means a lot. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.